Welcome to Mike Ferry TV. It is the week of May 6th through 12th. We're in our sixth week of this series. Hopefully the foundation that you're trying to create is strengthening each week as we go along. Remember, if you do the different assignments we give you, you actually progress a little bit faster. That's the purpose of homework. So before we get too far into this week, which is going to be on lead follow-up, I wrote down the following. A lot of you have now registered for a complimentary coaching evaluation, and we're, we're really excited about that. Good for you. Um, the average agent that works with us is selling between 40 and 50 homes a year in our coaching programs. Our top ones are averaging 89. Which number do you want to get to? Call us. Get involved. But also, if you've, we've covered time management, prospecting, past clients, running a camp presentation, you should be seeing some results. And if you're not, I want you to send me an email or I want you to talk to your broker, your manager, because you should be seeing some changes in your behavior. And of course, in the month of May, this month, in Anaheim, California, we're doing our productivity school, May 22 to 24. Since we're working hard on learning presentations, this may be something that a lot of you should strongly consider going to, to advance or forward this whole process. So let's talk about lead follow-up. I'm gonna start with this. What is your definition of a lead? What is your definition? And I want you to give that some thought as we start. Your definition of a lead is, because one of the probably big controversies in real estate is always this whole concept of what is a good lead. Because see, today with the internet and with all the various crazy things that you do to buy leads, to avoid having to prospect, you really have to define what a lead is. See, for Mike Ferry, a lead is a person who will buy or sell real estate, sign a contract in the next seven to 10 days. That's what a lead is. Anything else is not a lead at all. Now I know that immediately when I say that, some of you get a little nervous, your heart rate goes up, your hands perspire, you know, you get, you get a few goosebumps. Mike, how can you say seven to 10 days? Some of these people, it takes them months and months and months to make a decision. That's why you're not productive because of what you just said. Top producers churn leads like any other part of the business. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. See, if you're holding on to a buyer lead for two, three, four, five, six weeks and months, all you're doing is spending a lot of time with no return on your investment. If you've got a seller lead you've been working with for days and weeks and months at a time, hoping and praying they're gonna list their home, you've walked past, you've bypassed maybe several great listings and sales you could have made. You've got to define your definition of a lead, but the definition of a lead depends upon how much production you want. If you want to do four or five deals a year, a lead is anybody that buys or sells between now and the time you expire. If you want to do 20 deals a year, you have to shorten the definition of a lead because you don't have time to waste. But if you want to do 50, 75, 100 deals a year, you're going to follow Mike for his definition of a lead, somebody that will buy or sell, sign a contract in the next seven to 10 days. I wrote down the following, be fanatical on your lead follow-up because they gave you their name and their number for a reason. I, I just, I don't understand these agents and I see them all the time. They're walking off a stack full of leads and I said, let me see your leads. And I, uh, you got a lead here from Mr. Jones. He wants to sell his house. Yeah. And you talked to him uh, two months ago, right? Have you talked to him since? No, he wasn't ready then. So wait a minute, the key to lead follow-up is constantly being fanatical because if they say to you I'm interested in buying or selling they're not saying it because they have nothing to do with their life people don't want to sit around and talk to real estate agents all day long they're doing it because they want to do something well Mike if I'm fanatical and they don't want to do anything now what do I do based on your definition of a lead either you keep it or throw it away see for me if they said Mike I'm interested in selling my home I'd say great and when do you want to do it? Well, I don't want to do it for about four months. Great, here's my name and number, call me when you're ready. When do you want to sell your home? Well, as soon as I can, great. That fits into my seven to day, seven to 10 day period, and I go right after them. Well, I call them twice in the first 10 days, and they stall me and they put me off. Well, we're not sure what we're gonna do, and we're not really ready, and maybe we're gonna wait a few months. Good, call me when you're ready, because I'm gonna go find the next one so I can achieve the goals that I've set. So I wrote down, you have to learn to throw leads away because the better we become at building our business prospecting lead generation, the fewer leads we actually need. See, the truth is, if you wanna do 50 listings the next 12 months, 
you probably only need to have about 70 great listing leads, don't you? Because you'll convert most of them to appointments and contracts. I've met people that have three, four, five hundred leads, and they're doing 10, 12 deals a year. That doesn't even make sense. See, the truth is, as you become more productive, the number of leads in your stack decline. You don't need to have a lot of leads. So I want you to learn to throw leads away if they're not motivated. Now let's stop. Motivated. The key to a great lead is the motivation of the potential buyer or seller. Everything depends upon their motivation. If they really have the desire to do something, they're gonna set an appointment and sign a contract with somebody, hopefully you, ASAP. But you see guys and gals, if they don't have any motivation, why are you talking to them? And I have agents say to me all the time, well, if I talk to them and 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 talk to them, I can help them discover their motivation. You gotta be kidding me. I actually think you're gonna motivate a person that doesn't wanna buy or sell to suddenly buy or sell because you're talking to them? Watch, everybody tells me I'm a pretty good motivator of real estate people, and I can't get half of you to do anything I say. And I'm giving you a basic foundation for building a successful career and making a lot of money, and I can't get you to do it. And you're gonna take a person that doesn't wanna sell and talk them into selling? Come on, grow up, that isn't gonna happen. Throw that lead away. Each week, I want you to take a careful look at all the leads you have and see how many will sign a contract in the next seven to 10 days. So let's do a little exercise right now. I want you just to stop and write down how many total leads do you have in your database, in your computer, in your software, on your three by five cards, on sheets of papers, napkins from bars, you know, matchbook covers. How many leads do you really have? Come on, be honest. And then I want you to look at those leads right now and say to yourself, how many are gonna sign a contract in the next seven to 10 days? Now here's what I see in seminars every day. I got 42 leads and I have two that will buy or sell in the next seven to 10 days. I got 21 leads and I have one. And I've heard this one. I got 15 leads and I don't have one person that's gonna sign a contract. Get to work. Is there anybody in your marketplace that's gonna buy or sell a home within five miles of your office in the next five days? I'll bet there is. Are they gonna call you? I bet they're not. You need to find them. There are leads out there that wanna buy or sell. So I wrote down, since we have seven to 10 days to convert a lead to an appointment, don't be afraid to be aggressive. Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Now, now think about this, okay? Honestly, how often do you lose deals because you're too aggressive? Come on, be honest. How often does your broker get a phone call about you? I'm not gonna work with Maria, she's too aggressive. It isn't gonna happen, guys and gals. So be more aggressive. Watch, they're looking for an agent that will take a stand, tell them the truth, and do the job. And you can start that process with them in your lead follow-up. So then I wrote down, remember that lead follow-up is like prospecting, it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game, that's all it is. You gotta play the game. You're gonna churn leads on a regular basis. So the next few points though, are the ones that you really have to focus on. I wrote down, leads have no actual value. Appointments and contracts have value. Leads have no actual value. Okay, you have what, five, 10, 15 leads right now? How big a check would I write you to buy those from you right now? You're gonna to say to yourself, well, you wouldn't give me a penny for them. Right, because they don't have any value. And then I wrote down, since we all have the same leads, thinking they're going to grow and get better makes no sense. Everybody has the same leads. The person that calls them first gets the contract signed. Then I wrote down, leads do not represent security. Their names on a piece of paper are in your computer. And since most of us overprotect our leads because we believe nobody else has them, and we already agree that everybody has the same leads, be more aggressive in your approach. Now people say to me all the time, so what's the ideal lead follow-up system? And the truth is, go down and spend a couple bucks and buy a stack of 100 three by five cards. And every time you get a lead, name, address, phone number, email address in the top left-hand corner. Top right-hand corner, B for buyer, S for seller. Okay, which one is it? On the bottom of the three by five card, the date you acquired them, March 13th. And then next to it, the date you're willing to throw it away if they don't do anything. And if you can't write down a date, you're not following a good lead follow-up system whatsoever. 
Well, Mike, what do I say to all these leads when I call them? Ring, ring, ring. They say, hello, hi, Mrs. Smith, it's Mike. Do you folks still have to buy or do you still have to sell your home? Well, yes, we're still talking about selling our home. Can we set an appointment for this week? No, we don't want to do anything probably now until August. Okay, call me in August, Psh, throw them away. Simplify, be aggressive, do your job. Convert the leads to appointments, which makes the whole process worthwhile. So I wrote down a couple things for you to do this week. Call every lead you have and ask them for an appointment. Call every lead you have and ask them for an appointment. And then throw away all those leads that are not gonna do anything in the next seven to 10 days. Believe me when I tell you, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna become more aggressive. <clears throat> Here's the fun part. You're probably gonna to have to do some prospecting. Have a great week, talk to you next week. Hey, don't forget, Productivity School in Anaheim, you probably need to be there. Have some fun, bye-bye.